You ready to go, Tala? Are we ready? Hello and welcome to the Knit Cute Podcast. That is just too much hesitation, puppy. Let's try that again. Maybe we'll call this one repetition, huh? Hello and welcome to the Knit Cute Podcast. Today is, let's see, it's Tuesday, August 7th, 2018, and this is episode two. And I think I'm going to call it repetition. I don't know. We'll see what I end up choosing. You'll know by the time you watch this. Oh God, puppy, let's try that again. Listen, if you want my attention so badly, I'm going to hold you for a second and show you off so that all my friends out there can see you. Oh, no, 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 no don't show off us. You're fine. Oh, goodness. Show them. Show them your pretty face. Oh, you like Kuman. This is not nice. Hello, and welcome to... <laughs> Oh, that was the worst timing. Hello, and welcome to the Knit Cute Podcast. This is episode 002, Regeneration, and I would like to thank you for joining me today. I am your host, Amanda, and you can find me as So Nitpicky on Instagram and as Knit Cute on YouTube. There is a Knit Cute Ravelry group, and I would love to see you join us there. And uh, let's see, this is a mostly knitting, but also other crafting content podcast. You will see things like uh, weaving, Sometimes I'm, I'm trying to become a weaver, so it's actually not spinning. <laughs> Sewing sometimes, uh, cross stitch, sometimes embroidery, and whatever other things strike my fancy at any given time. Currently, there isn't a blog for the show notes because I have been having some issues with WordPress and trying to get my domain switched over so that the money that I, the very big amount of money I spend every year uh, getting the unlimited hosting size is not wasted on a blog that I no longer plan to use, but will be connected in. Uh, so right now there are no show notes. I may try to remember to put them into the, uh, the block down there on YouTube. If not, I'll try to remember to do them on the Ravelry uh, page thread for this episode. Um, so I'm sorry that if there aren't any, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me about anything and I will get back to you as promptly as I can and try to answer your questions as best that I can. So before we get into today's podcast, I wanted to just remind you that Socket to Summer 2018 is still ongoing. You have until the 31st of this month. Oh, by the way, today is Wednesday. August 8th, 2018. Uh, as you will have seen already from the bloopers in the beginning, I tried to record yesterday and it was a hot mess. So anyway, Socket to Summer is still ongoing for a few more weeks. If you would like to take your chances and enter in for maybe some prizes, because of my long hiatus and not coming back promptly, I think uh, a lot of people are not aware that Socket to Summer is going on yet, and I would just like to uh, gently encourage you to share with people you know who maybe would want to participate that there's still a little over three weeks left. Um, so we're a little lower on entries than usual, so there won't be quite as many prizes this time around, but that's okay. It's okay to have a, a slower year, and then next summer is going to be a little unusual too, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so right now there's for sure going to be a chat thread prize. So even if you don't finish your socks, if you want to just come in and chat, show off some of your works in progress, uh, for that thread I will be giving away a pattern. And usually my rule of thumb is is a pattern $10 or less downloadable on Ravelry so I can just gift it right to you. It's super slick and really easy. I love it. Um, and then for the main thread, I'm think or for the finished objects thread, I'm thinking I might offer up a hand spun prize where either I would offer up some hand spun I've already spun or I would maybe give the winner a choice between a few braids and say hey I can spin something up for you and do either a two ply or a three ply yarn although a three ply would be a little bit thicker for somebody who maybe wants to try out hand spun but doesn't do their own spinning or I might pick something out of my stash because I have a gorgeous large stash and um, I'm not knitting it as quickly as I would like to. So anyway, I think we're gonna do that. And then I think there's also going to be what I'm calling an accessories prize, uh, which will be, I think, probably a bag 
and then I found a whole bunch of accessories while I was cleaning up my house. Things like a bunch of stitch markers I've never used, uh, really cute tape measures, things of that nature. So I think we're going to have some fun little prizes here and I'm going to try to record before Socket to Summer ends and actually show something off this time. But again, I'm not going to make any promises depending on content because it obviously I didn't have any content up until this point and it took almost a month for me to record again to get enough for me to feel like I could talk about it. So anyway, we're going to go into the podcast and what I'll do is I'm going to talk about knitting, which is I have a finished object, a couple works in progress, um, adjacent cast-ons, um, I'm going to talk about Tour de Fleece and wrap that up. I'm going to talk about a cross-stitch project I've been working on. And then I think I'm going to do some life chat at the end. So anybody who's not interested in listening to me blather on about my life doesn't have to listen to it and sit through that to get to the content in the podcast. So let's get going. So first up is my finished object. You saw these last time I talked to you. Uh, this is probably going to be my only finished pair of socks for Socket to Summer. Unfortunately, even though I like to host Socket to Summer, I very rarely finish any socks during the summer, ironically enough. I usually get through one pair and I might start a second, but I don't know if I've ever had a summer where I've knit multiple pairs. So I was in the middle of knitting the second sock on these last time I showed them to you. And these are my fifth pair of socks. Socks. <laughs> socks for 2018. My mouth is moving faster than my brain can send the words. That happens to me a lot. And uh, these are another pair for myself. These are um, nomadic, fi nomadic yarns. The twisty base, I think that's her 7525 base. So it's like the 460 yards to 100 grams base that all of us, pretty much all of us carry that people seem to really like. And uh, it's in the Orla colorway. And I never know if her name is Orla Keeley or Orla Kylie. Uh, she's a British designer who does these very um, retro, mid-century modern color palettes, as well as um, very mod designs uh, inspired by like the late 60s and early 70s in that mid-century area, area, <laughs> era. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, there's a cat outside my window and I'm listening to my dogs whine if you can hear them. And I was trying to figure out what's going on and I'm, now I'm distracted on top of being flighty. That's amazing. So I finally finished these. I was somewhere in the foot of the second sock the last time I talked to you. And now I have a pair that just need the ends woven in on them because that's kind of how I do things around here. I tend to wait to weave in ends until I'm ready to wear the socks. So this um, fall, which for me is not that far away. It's three, maybe four weeks away at most. Um, I will take any socks that I've finished and haven't woven the ends in yet, and I will have a, a week or so where I'll weave in ends on all of my socks and make them wearable and add them to my collection. So let's talk about the particulars of the sock real quick in case you're not aware of how I make mine. I knit all my socks toe up when I can help it because I like them better for getting a better fit. Um, I've never had a lot of success with top down socks. I always manage to underestimate how long the foot should be and I always have fit issues so I prefer toe up because it's easier for me to try on. So I do a Turkish cast on. I like to do a rounded toe so I do uh, five increase rows really quickly here which actually you can see on this on this right now very very close together every single row so that they spread out faster and then I switch to an every third row increase until I get to the number that I want to make the toe cap longer. I do that um, I knit my foot and then I do the fish lips kiss heel which on these socks almost worked out perfectly actually this one looks like they worked out really well there's this one little row of yellow and on the other sock there's a full stripe of yellow around in between the peach stripes. Uh, so I do that and then I knit up a few inches. I like to have my socks a little bit shorter uh, because I have very um, dramatic, I have a very dramatic and very quick increase between my ankle and my calf muscle. And so I tend to like to keep my socks shorter because I don't like having to try to figure out how to stretch over them. And especially with self-striping socks, my stripes get super thin really quickly and it's just um, not something that I enjoy. So I knit a shorter leg. I tend to go two to three inches and then I do ribbing. And then I do Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, which works really well for me. If you have, if you keep your tension tighter, it's a really good bind off for doing because um, it doesn't flare out when you hold the yarn tight enough. So what I have here and I wanted to show you guys is that I do a thing with my stripes so that the pearl bumps do not cause that kind of heathered effect they can do in self-striping yarns. 
I actually on the color change row um, once the color changes I switch to all knit stitches all the way around until I've hit that point again and then I go back to knitting and purling and it creates a nice clean look but it doesn't affect the stretchiness and you can't really tell I mean even just looking at it it's hard to see where the knits are versus the pearls and it has a nice neat clean result and I really enjoy that so these are done and I have not yet cast on my next pair of socks because I've been busy doing other things and haven't had a chance to do so yet so for my works in progress I have two one that I've shown you before and one that's a new cast on since the last time I recorded and the first one is my 10 stitch blanket again which is a pattern a free pattern by Frankie Brown you can find it on Ravelry it's an I think it's an adaptation actually of a um oh goodness I could see her face an Elizabeth Zimmerman pattern I was thinking Elizabeth Smith for some reason and I thought that's not right uh, so I think it's an adaptation of one of her patterns and I have adapted this for fingering weight and I've turned it into a modular quilt instead of a single um, continuous piece blanket and I'm still on the same square I was working on last time this is eight out of nine I'm hoping to finish square eight this month and then do square nine next month and then I'm gonna start working on the sashing and then the border and then hopefully an eye cord bind off and have this blanket done by the end of the year but this is square number eight still. Uh, last time I talked to you guys, I think I was in this purple section. I have since added some Cozy Knitter Huga colorway. And I'm working in now, I believe this is some Spud and Chloe Fine that was sent to me by the lovely Christina. Thank you, Christina. I am definitely using these yarns that you sent me for solids. And if I don't have quite enough of this and I'm a little worried about it, I will substitute in a color that looks like it could belong there probably some cream or another similar greenish color to just finish off whatever I can't with this ball but I wanted to see a nice big shot of this this one I'm doing very soft colors whereas most of the other squares that I showed you in the last episode um, are a little bit more bold and bright and very um, kind of wild but I thought it might be nice to have one softer kind of creamy pastel -y square so that I have been working on a little bit off and on and I'm making slow progress. Once I finish this solid stripe round, I need one more self striping and then one more solid and then this one will be finished and I can move on to stripe or block number nine. I'm getting excited. My, um, my partials tote is going down in size as I do these, but it's still pretty full even though I haven't been knitting a ton of socks and a ton of other things. So I'm thinking actually once I finish this blanket, I might start a second one and create a second one of the same size to um, eat up some more of those scraps, but we'll see. That might be a little bit too wild. I don't know if I'm gonna do that. Now the second work in progress I have is a new cast on and it's a shawl called Canyon Land by Nim Teasdale and that is a pay for pattern on Ravelry. Um, I was inspired by seeing Amy Beth's on the Fat Squirrel Speaks and I thought what a neat subtle pattern but kind of fun to use up some hand spun. So I cast one of these on in two colorways. One is my two one of my 2015 Tour de Fleece spins. It's a spun right round combo spin um, of two of her braids. I can't remember what colors they were. I think one was a color play and one might have been one with a name. Uh, but it's all berries and pinks and purples and blues and there's a ton of gray in there and it just makes these really beautiful heathered stripes. And then the second one is um, a batch of a 2014 Into the World Odds and Ends bag. And I can't remember what yarn festival I got it at that year, if that was Maryland Sheep and Wool or if that was when I went to Rhinebeck. It was one of them, but at that same festival, I got a Moosey Spindle, and I spun this on my new Moosey Spindle as well. So I um, used my new, this was my first spin on that. I don't use spindle spin too much anymore, but I do sometimes use it for fibers that I'm afraid I'm going to over twist on my spinner. Um, I am getting better with my spinner so that I can, um, I think I can do more nicer, more nicer singles on it, but, um, in terms of single singles, not ones that are gonna be applied. But anyway, <laughs> these two I thought would go together quite nicely. And uh, so far, I like the shawl. I'm just gonna say that, because obviously here I'm doing a bit of a caveat. Um, but it's not one that I think is gonna be for me. I think I'm going to let my daughter have it. She's tried to claim it. And I think I'm gonna let her take it as hers. Because even though I like it, it's, 
not colors I think I'm gonna wear. So I'll show you what I have so far, and I'm really enjoying knitting it, so that's one of the things, right? I'm trying to get it oriented the correct way before I show you, but here is what I have so far. And I mean, it's, it's really pretty. That's not the problem. Like, I love how this is looking. It's just that I don't know if it's something I would wear. And before I even cast it on, because I don't think I was working on it before I dropped my children off in Wisconsin with their grandparents, my daughter took one, one look at the two um, cakes of yarn and told me that this was going to be her shawl. Um, she never wears anything that I make for her intentionally, but she tries to steal every single hand knit that I'm currently working on, regardless of how big it is. Like that boxy sweater I showed you guys last time that is huge. She tried to steal from me and she put on and it's laughably big. You could probably fit about five of her in it. <laughs> but she's trying to insist that it will be her sweater someday. I did buy the children's version of that pattern, so that's probably something I should knit for her since she seems to have an interest in it. But anyway, uh, so here it is. It's a very simple garter stitch shawl. I'm not going to try to give away the secret sauce here. It's knit on the bias like a lot of these. It's a kind of a slightly asymmetrical triangle. So, you know, see it's kind of the shape it's taking here, and you can kind of see how that shaping is working on that last bit. Um, it it uh, increases exponentially out of this section, but these ones up here go much more slowly. And when it's done, it'll have a vaguely triangle shape to it. It's got a little bit of eyelet rose so that there's a little bit of a slight chevron to it, which is why I like it so much. I love chevrons. And uh, yeah, so far I'm liking it. This first section I did of the Into the World, um, I decided to do it as a block. Originally I wanted to stripe it in every other row, but I thought, you know, I would try this first because these two go so well with the colors in here. I thought, well, let's give this a try first. Um, I'm almost through my current repeat over here, and I'm thinking I'm going to do another one of these. I might do one more repeat, actually. I think I'm going to go a little bit wider here. Or I'm going to do a section where I stripe these every other row and try to get something a little bit more rainbowy because the color I'd be doing now is I'd be going into these blues and greens on the outside and that might be pretty too doing alternating stripes of blue and green with the, the pinky purples and grays. So we'll see how this goes. This is actually a really easy to memorize pattern. At this point I have the whole pattern memorized. The only time you really need to do a lot of thinking is when you get up to this point and then from here on out once you know the pattern it's super easy and she tells you different ways to modify it and I'm thinking that if I do do this for if I do do this if I do make this for my daughter I might do one of her modifications which is to in between the larger sets of increased rows um do more rows in between and stretch it out so that it doesn't get super super big <laughs> long uh, faster than it can get long I, I'm not explaining that very well but hopefully that makes sense so yeah this is definitely a thing at this point I love it. I think it's really pretty. I'm just not sure it's going to be mine. It might end up being my daughter's. But you know what? Maybe I'll change my mind about that while I work on it some more because seeing it on camera, I'm kind of already changing my mind on that. So the last time I talked to you guys, it was I think July 12th, might have been, and it was four or five days into Tour de Fleece 2018. And this year, like every other year, I did not finish the Tour de Fleece. I have yet to finish one successfully, as far as I know. And this is because usually we travel during the summer, which makes it nearly impossible to keep up because I don't, I can't really spin when I'm home so much. I do a little bit off and on, but I don't do too much. And usually, once I get to the point that I decide to start plying, I don't feel like making singles anymore, which is what ended up happening. I did the singles for three spins, which I had shown you guys. I was in the middle of the singles for the third spin when I last talked to you. And I decided to do my plying. And I finished up plying, I think, on the 24th or the 25th of last month. And Tour de Fleece went through the 29th. So in my defense, I did make it almost the entire Tour de Fleece this time. But I didn't feel like picking up a fourth spin in the last few days. So I did get three bumps of fiber out of the stash, which is more than I've done all year. I haven't really spun, but I have to admit, I really did enjoy spinning again. So I might have to try to make it a once a month, focus on it for two to four days thing, and then put the wheel away. Cause otherwise I would do nothing but spin yarn. So this first one is a Noro 
wheel, which after I spun it, a couple of my friends had mentioned to me that they thought maybe it was intended to be knit with in the state that it was, although I don't know how you could have because it came apart so easily and I don't know how anyone would knit with that. But that may have been what it was intended for. And I ended up spinning this thing and it's turned out to be a super, super chunky, puffy yarn. It's a two ply and there were about 3.9 ounces of it. Uh, that's because I lost some of it due to tangling and some other issues. I can't remember exactly what was going on. I think it was tangling because I ply out of a, oh, actually I didn't even ply out of a plying cake this time because this yarn was so fat, it took up two bobbins. But somehow I lost a bunch of like a, a big, wad of fiber that something happened with it I can't remember now but I didn't take the yardage on this one because this is actually going into my daughter's stash because she's also trying to take up knitting so I thought you know what I don't really like the yarn I'm not going to use it for anything maybe she can knit a little doll blanket or something out of it so here it is I can't remember what color wheel this was I had I said the number last time and I showed the tag so go back to episode one if you would like to see that and it's this really puffy I mean it's beautifully puffy and this is only 3.9 ounces and like this is bigger than some of my seven or eight ounce spins in terms of uh, width and skein size. Um, it's mostly blues with some kind of gold swampy greens. There's a lot of kind of a light ballerina pink in here and then there's a lot of white and there's little shots of this kind of blushy ruddy red which is it's pretty uh, but it's just it's not quite my thing and I don't think it's a might be able to get away with wearing it but anyway it's gonna be hers and I'm gonna let her knit whatever she wants out of it I'm hoping to kind of encourage her to do a blanket uh, I've been te trying to teach her how to knit and sorry, let me put this down for a second and I thought that the easiest way to teach her would be to get her to practice a specific stitch for a long time because I think like me she has a hard time kind of remembering the motions of something until she's done it many many times so I've been casting on her projects for her she knit one doll blanket which has not been super successful she's told me she wants to talk to you guys about it at some point but whenever I wanted to record it she wasn't ready yet to cast it off and I wanted to do it just once <laughs> so she knit a a garter stitch kind of blanket thing for a doll bed she no longer owns anymore which is kind of funny because it's been that long since she started the project but um she she is in the running for another one and so I'm trying to get her to practice just the knit stitch and remembering how to do the knit stitch remembering how to turn her own rows remembering how to hold the yarn and that's been a process for her she is only nine she's gonna be ten next month already oh my goodness she's gonna be ten next month um, but like me I was very slow to learn how to knit I don't remember if I talked about that with my knitting story that I had started trying to learn how to knit and crochet when I was about seven or eight because one of my grandmothers did uh, she wasn't very patient she wasn't a great teacher and every time I tried to learn I'd get frustrated and I'd stop because just I had such a negative association with it and I wasn't able to persevere and keep pushing through and it wasn't until my son was a year old and after I don't know at least a dozen attempts to learn that it finally clicked for me so I figured she might be kind of the same way so I haven't been trying to pressure her to learn how to purl I haven't been trying to pressure her to learn how to do anything else just let's just knit something that the stitch count doesn't change and just let's knit and knit and knit and get this stitch down before we start trying to learn how to purl um, I do know that she is knitting at one of her grandmother's houses right now my mother-in-law is also a knitter and uh, I think she's working in dish cotton which is very different than the yarn I had her knitting in um, and I think she's knitting something that she's going to turn into a washcloth I think is what she called it so it's it's another garter stitch square basically so anyway that's going into her stash and that will be her first stash from me However, um, I think I heard that she's conned my mother into buying her some yarn and tried to talk her into more. And I think she's been trying to con her her other grandmother into buying her some yarn. So she's she's not doing too badly while she's back with the grandmas. So anyway, let's keep talking about those Tour de Fleece spins. So my second one is my personal favorite one out of this batch. And it was that really beautiful aquamarine Cormo alpaca mix and it was from a fiber festival that I went to shortly after I moved here I've been here for six years and so I went to a fiber festival probably that following either that fall or that spring there's a lot of them around here in this area and they're all either in the fall or there's quite a few of them in the spring and they're very small usually because they're in very small areas and I got this for 
it's, it was a really good price and it was gorgeous. And I've decided that I really like spinning Cormo. This was my first time spinning it, but I like the result and I even like it with the alpaca, even though alpaca can be a bit problematic for me. So this one ended up being 4.1 ounces and I got approximately 355 yards of a three ply combo with a chain ply. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second because I felt so clever when I figured this out when I was spinning. But let's show it to you first. So this is what I ended up with. So based on yardage, it should be probably sport-ish weight. Um, there's some spots here that are a little finer and some that are a little thicker, as is the way with hand spun. I mean, like you can see in here that there's a few of these that are a lot smaller, but most of them are pretty consistently this width, which is, it's, yeah, it's kind of in that sport-ish weight, weight range. My camera never likes blue green, so it's going warm, cold, warm, cold. Let's see if we can, that's a pretty good color accurate thing right there. So anyway, it's very nice and soft. It's really springy and I very much love this one. This one, I think I could wear near my skin and it wouldn't bother me too much. I have very sensitive skin when it comes to animal fibers and other things. And then my last one is a Pigeon Roof Studios braid. I know it was a one of a kind and I think it was called Rose Marshmallow or something like that. I, I think I showed you guys the tag last time. I can't remember and I don't know where the tags are at the moment. But it was part of a one of a kind series where Krista was dying a whole bunch of stuff. And this one was a Pullworth mohair silk blend and unfortunately I discovered that just like I can't wear commercial mohair this yarn despite how pretty it is and I love how pretty it is um I can't wear it on my neck or my face or anywhere near my chest like whenever I do it feels like it's stabbing me with little tiny prickly fingers everywhere which is a shame because oh I love it so much um so anyway I'll talk to you about it first and then I'll show you this one ended up being four and a quarter ounces and it's approximately 280 yards of a chain ply. So it's a little heavier weight than the other one, but here it is. It's so pretty. Look how pretty it is. I'm so bummed that I can't wear this near my skin without my skin screaming that it's being stabbed and feeling like I'm itchy and with, like I'm just, I'm on fire. So it ended up turning out really gorgeously. I spun this as all one single and then chain plied it. I broke it into, I think, uh, I broke it into half and then I think I broke each half into three or four parts. So it was a six or an eight part so that there were these short little bursts of color. Like my favorite parts are where the blues come in. So pretty. And it's prettier in person than it is on camera because cameras have a hard time with this. But it's, it's a very nice yarn. It turned out beautifully. I love how it looks. I love how it plied up. And even I like the squish on it. It's not too bad. Um, but it ended up being, it's too stabby for me because of the mohair, which is unfortunate. But anyway, I, I thought that um, if I do maybe a two color shawl, they look really nice together, you guys. Like these are beautiful. And even though the yardages are very different, the thicknesses are very similar. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but they're very similar. This one is very slightly heavier, but that's never stopped me from using yarns together. And I think they would be beautiful in like a striped project or a project with color work. And I was thinking that if I use this one in the majority of the section, depending on whether I did a side to side or a top down and closer to my face, and then this one in areas that aren't going to touch my face so much, I might get away with it. And I just realized, I forgot to tell you something about this one. So this one, I was telling you that I did a combination of a traditional three ply and then turned it into a chain ply at the end. So I do my three plies the, plies the same way I do my two plies. I do singles one and two as a long continuous single on one bobbin and I wind them together or I wind it onto a cake and then I ply from both ends. Now. As you get to the middle and you get to the end, you're left with a loop at the end. And I, I've never had the opportunity to try this before, but I noticed this as I was plying, but obviously the third single is on its own bobbin, by the way. So as I was plying this and I got towards the end, I realized I had quite a bit of single three left, but I was gonna obviously use up all the singles one and two. And it occurred to me as I was plying, and I'm looking at these plies all by each other, that I can pull single three through the little loop at the end of singles one and two where they come together and suddenly I have a chain ply. 
you see all like the little exclamation points flying out of my head right now this was just the most amazing I don't even want to say necessarily revolutionary idea I'm sure somebody else has thought of this before I can't possibly be inventing something new but I felt so pleased with myself when I realized this and thought that is an amazing way to use up all of those singles and I wouldn't even have to necessarily chain ply then for you know the majority of it and I thought I could use this for future yarns and the section that's chain plied is very slightly thinner than the rest of it but because it's hand spun it's inconsistent anyway so it's not even a big deal and because this was a semi-solid you can't even tell what's chain plied versus what's three plied it just worked out so so amazingly well <laughs> I was so pleased and if no one's ever thought to do that before I'm going to trademark that technique right now I don't know what we'll call it we'll call it something magic plying technique who knows but anyway, so that was my tour de fleece and I was really pleased even though I spun only three braids. Normally I tend to spin four to five braids of fiber during tour de fleece, but because I'm transitioning from doing quick and dirty two plies, which I just don't like as much when I knit them up, to doing three plies all of the time, I'm okay with that because my singles have to be thinner and thinner, finer singles take longer to spin. So I'm okay with it. I'm not sure when I'm gonna spin again. I'm hoping maybe before the end of this month that I can spin one more braid of fiber. But for sure, I'll definitely spin during Spinzilla, which is one week in October. So if I haven't spun between now and then, I'll probably focus and spin several more braids during that week. So we'll see what happens. I'm hoping I'll have something for you between now and then. So the last crafty thing I have to show you guys today is my cross stitch. So I decided I got a bit of a wild hair this last week and I decided to try to bang out an alphabet sampler for my son's room before my children get back on Tuesday night as in six days from now Tuesday night which is a little crazy um but I got started and I'm, I'm making decent progress so far so this is the Pokemon alphabet sampler by Stitch Bucket on Etsy and it's currently on sale for $2.99 um, I think this pattern is only $3.99 anyway I've talked about his patterns in the past they are inexpensive they're often pop culture related they look more like pixel sprites and um they're they're pretty fun I did I ordered last July I purchased four patterns and I've stitched up and shown you four of them now there was a stranger things one there was one of the uh, Jesus does not pee on the toilet seat one um, and there was what was that last one I can't remember what it was now but there was one more that I stitched up from him so anyway um, this is the last sampler from that batch and this is what I have so far it's Pokemon. I think it's all Generation 1 and 2. Like Gen 1s I know really well off the top of my head because I was really into Gen 1. But then we get to Gen 2 which is some of these other ones and I'm not 100% sure who's who here besides the Umbrian um, or the Umbreon, however you want to pronounce it. Um, but other than that it's it's really fun. It's cute. It gets the point across. It's a little futzy because there's a, an awful lot of speckling and um, counting involved and in putting the colors down but the um, results are well worth it. I did make one mistake in here that I didn't change and that was that onyx here his purple is supposed to be this blue lilac color because two of the colors have almost the exact same number except for one's a four digit number and one's a three digit number and I screwed them up but I decided that if my son I don't think my son will complain he can have a purple onyx instead of a blue gray one but yeah I'm really happy with how this is turning out um, since it's an alphabet sampler, obviously there are 26. All of a sudden I'm questioning this, you guys. I think there's 26. <laughs> oh gosh, that's going to be great. Do you know Amanda doesn't even know how many letters are in the alphabet? Anyway, we have six, eight done so far. Um, I've been doing at least one a day. Uh, I had one day here when our AC went out that I'll talk about soon here, where I actually stitched in three of these guys because I had to sit in front of a fan and couldn't do much else. And uh, yeah, it's going really well. I'm working my way up the chart here currently. Um, it's been split into 12 charts and I'm currently working on a different one. And I've just been working around completing them and uh, going from there. So this will end up being the whole width of this fabric. 
I made a little bit of an error in my calculations of how much fabric I needed. So it's going to be really close on both of these sides, not quite enough to frame. So what I did is I ordered a frame off of Amazon with a mat. And I'm going to take scraps and I'm going to actually serge it together with these, press them. And then as I go to um, attach and lace the, um, the sampler around a board, I'm going to just have that be hidden underneath the frame and underneath the mat. So it'll turn out. But I figured my son's room needs some decoration and he really does like Pokemon quite a bit. And I thought it might be fun to get a couple um, game related things in his room. So if you're not interested in any life chatter, that's the end of the podcast for you today. And I want to thank you once again for joining me and I will talk to you next time. Uh, for those of you who want to hear about what I've been up to for a couple of weeks, let's get into that. So life has been very busy for the last three weeks. As you saw, I haven't been doing as much crafting as I want to, to, to. Um, but we've been very, um, we've been very productive here. My husband took leave as soon as we dropped the kids off and he took three full weeks. He's back to work this week, which he is sad about because he was enjoying being retired for three weeks. He always insists that he doesn't like the idea of retirement and he always wants to keep busy until he takes these three to four week off blocks of time during the summer and then he remembers, oh yeah, that's right. The idea of being retired actually is pretty sweet, which I kind of laugh about. But um, he's back to work this week and we are slowing down on our projects, but we have been working on deep cleaning and decluttering our house. We are getting ready to move next summer, which is why next summer's socket to summer is going to be a little bit bananas and I'm going to be a little bit absent because I'm probably going to be moving most likely cross country during that time. Um, I could move anywhere between April and September, but we are officially on the move list. So we know for a fact we are going. We just don't know where and exactly when yet. I'll hopefully know beginning of the next year here in February or March. And once I know, I'll let you guys know in case any of you are in the area and want to start setting up a meetup at some point. Uh, anywho, so we're trying to clear out our house a bit because we have a weight limit for how much poundage the government will pay to move for us. And we're worried that in the six years we've been here, we've accumulated enough that we're not going to hit that, we're gonna go over that weight limit and we're not gonna make it within. So because of that, we've been going through and getting rid of furniture that's not working for us, trying to reduce our weight by getting rid of books we're definitely no longer gonna read, things that are just taking up space and taking up poundage. And uh, so we went through our kids' rooms like we do every summer when they're gone and we totally tore everything out took everything down to the just the bare room. We scrubbed all the walls, we shampooed all the carpets. Um, in the case where we can rearrange, we've been doing that. And we've been setting up our children's rooms to be a little bit more big kids' rooms versus little kids' rooms. Because my son just turned 12 and he's not interested in most of the stuff that was in his room when he was going on six when we moved here or had just turned six, no, he was five, no? six. He, was, he had just turned six, I think, when we moved here. And so he has very different interests now than he did at that time. His room was a little, little boyish, but I thought it was a good enough room that it would have worked through teenage years. But you know, that's on, that's his decision, not mine. And so his room is currently in flux and I'm a little sad being up there because it kind of looks like a guest room now instead of my boy's room. <laughs> So I'm trying to do things like the sampler and maybe get some more input from him about things he would like in his room, like some posters or something to give him something to look at in there. So we're doing that. And then my daughter's room is too small to really rearrange, which she's bummed about. But I, we're trying to do some nice things for her too, like creating a reading nook corner in her room with um, some pillows and things that she had tried to do on her own by tearing off all her bedding and creating one. And trying to just, you know, give them little things here or there that they enjoy. My daughter will be 10 in September, so she's not exactly a little, little girl anymore. And, you know, that's the thing about having kids is that things are constantly changing, even though you get used to them being a certain way. So I've accepted that they're both growing up, and I just need to um, give them some more input. And it's not so much about what I think they like anymore versus what they're telling me that they like. So, yeah. I suppose this is where I can get into some musical number like Sunrise Sunset and sing about where have my little children gone, but I'm really not too sad about that. I, 
yeah, I'm a little nostalgic sometimes, but I'm glad that they're growing up too because they're becoming pretty awesome people. So our house is currently tore up because we did not get as much work done as we thought we were going to and now my husband's back at work. So <laughs> we still need to finish that up hopefully before my kids get back in a few, in like six days. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's not been quite what we, we ambitiously dreamed it was going to be. Uh, so let me think, what else have we been doing? I haven't done a lot of sewing because my iron broke while we were on vacation here and I just finally got a new one and so I can get back to that. Um, I've been doing some dyeing for Lammy. Um, we're not, I'm just saying um a lot, I'm sorry. I do that when I'm, I'm going off script. I have been doing some dyeing for Lammy and having some issues trying to create a new repeatable colorway. So there's going to be a lot of very similar repeatables going up in the shop. I'm hoping to finally get the shop set up and running by the end of this weekend. With everything else going on and how unbearably hot it's been, I haven't really felt like dyeing yarn or doing anything related to Lammy. I had not expected to keep her closed for three or four, it hasn't been four weeks, but it's been like between two and three weeks. I had planned to reopen right away and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And I thought that when I reopened, I should have some new stock in the shop. So there's definitely gonna be some new stuff in there. There's also gonna be some changeling in there for those of you who like that old colorway. Um, and I'm kind of rethinking how I'm gonna do some of my listings, but we'll talk about that at a later date. And if you need to know the new shop URL, I will be posting it on my Instagram account and announcing it, as well as my uh, Lammy's Facebook page. But I think that's where I'm going to leave you guys this week because I'm already kind of near where I like to make the length of my episodes. Um, and I hopefully will be back to talk to you again in two to three weeks. Hopefully I'll have some content. And I think maybe next time I'll talk about some media recommendations of mine from the summer because I've been doing a fair amount of watching and a little bit of reading this summer. And I like to hear recommendations from other people, but I often don't have enough to do one every single time I record. So guys, until I talk to you again, actually, you know what? I'm not going to outro yet because uh, I'm trying to remember to be a better YouTuber. Uh, so thank you for watching and joining me today. If this was your first time, I appreciate that you gave me a try and I hope you'll stick around. And for those of you who have been with me since the beginning or since for a while with not a podcast, which I did for five years, by the way, you can find all those videos on this channel. Um, please like or share with someone you think who might enjoy me or sign up for notifications if you're worried about missing when I have a video upload. I think you can do all that for my profile. Maybe there's something down there that'll tell you you can uh, opt into notifications. It helps me in the search engine and it helps other people find me if you engage with me by commenting, liking, subscribing, and doing different things. Uh, it can be kind of hard to fight against the very biggest podcasts sometimes because they are massive in their numbers and they tend to be at the top of everything. So, you know, help out the smaller podcasters that you know, not even necessarily me. Um, if there's a smaller podcast that you enjoy, please make sure to comment on it, like it, and do things to help get it a little bit of traffic because we all need to help each other out, you know? Yeah. So, I think that's going to be it for today, you guys. Thank you so much. I will talk to you next time. And until I do, be your very best selves and do good things. Bye, kittens.